but we found that Cherbourg, shown here, was pretty badly destroyed by the Germans themselves. They destroyed the docks, which we thought we could use. And it took them, if I recall, almost two months before we could bring a ship in. They set up mines and uh, destroyed the famous uh, Cherbourg docks where the uh, transatlantic liners used to land. They not only destroyed the docks, but also the inland bridges that crossed the rivers that entered the Cherbourg area, the canals. Uh, this is one of them was destroyed by the Germans. Soon the French people came back into the city and gave us a warm welcome. And soon we found the prisoners, and I think they took something like 16 or 18,000 men out of the Cherbourg area and they're still holding their personal belongings, marching toward the beaches because they had to be transported to England and some eventually to the States to be held in prisoner of war camps. And even at this time, those that could talk to us or would talk to us said we'd be pushed back into the channel in less than a week. Of course, at every uh, headquarters area, we found uh, that the Germans had a picture of Herr Hitler and our boys are using it as a pinboard. But uh, the Americans had a way of amusing themselves. Now here is the first official ceremony held in France when General Collins on the right presented the tricolor fad flag made out of parachute cloth, seen here, to the mayor of Cherbourg who was holding the microphone. And our boys of the Seventh Corps were given clean uniforms for the occasion. And soon the people that came back to Cherbourg after the fighting stopped came to visit with us and talk to us. Here we see Ernie Pyle in the center again and talking to a colonel of the Signal Corps. And uh, this is Bert Brandt, who we saw earlier uh, shooting for AP. Uh, Cecil Carnes and John McGlincy. Uh, and here is, uh, oh gosh, 25 years has done a lot to my memory. <laughs> 